on the next day of the transfer. So whatever the infection which will happen on the day or the next day of transfer, the attributable uh, infection will be on the previous uh, location. If the patient has a multiple transfer within a facility, uh, on a day of event, the day before, attributed to the county to the first location in which the patient was housed before the county date of event. So, if the patient, again, I'm repeating this point, that if the patient county date of event happens to be on the day of transfer or the next day, then the county will be attributed to the previous location, not the present location. For example, this patient, uh, he was present in uh, 24th of May, he was present on, in unit A. On 25th of May, he was transferred from unit A to unit B, and on the same day, he was transferred to unit C. On the next day, that is 26th of May, the patient from unit C transferred to unit D, and the blood and the urine sample was taken, culture was taken, and it turned to be positive. Now, where should this county should be attributed? What is the location of attribution for this county? This one, the patient is in two location on the date of event. So, 26 was the date of event where the patient was present, uh, you know, within two locations, C or D. Attribute the infection to the first location in which the patient was housed the day before the infection's date of event. As I told you that the attribution, the location attribution will be the previous departments, not the present department. So the unit A will be the attribution of county because it is where the patient was present one on the day of uh, the day of event it is in the new location or the one day before the patient was present inside this location so the attribute the inf uh, attribute of the infection to the first location in which the patient was housed the day before the infection's date of event i think so this is uh, clear just you have to keep in mind that when the patient is in your department, he has to be inside your department for more than uh, uh, forget about the date of transfer. The next day, it is also not included. And the day after will be your patient. It will be the infection which is, uh, you know, uh, which is attributed to the location where the patient is present uh, currently. Now regarding uh, uh, the catheters that are removed and reinserted, these rules remain the same for all of the devices that if the device was removed and reinserted before a full calendar day, you should not be discontinuing the device. It should be the same device. You should be uh, continuing uh, the patient days uh, without any interruption. If the patient is without a urinary catheter for at least one calendar day, then you have to start counting the device day from one. Like, for example, today now it is almost uh, 1.30, the full catheter from the patient was being removed. So today it will not be counted because the part of the day the full catheter was in place. Tomorrow, if he remains without the Foley's catheter for full calendar day, then we need to start counting the device days from the zero. Okay? But if any time today or tomorrow the device, the Foley's catheter was reinserted, we should not be discontinuing the patient days and we will continue to count as we were. For example, in this, uh, in this uh, scenario, uh, the Foley's catheter was in place on day three and day four, that is March 31 and April 1. On April 2, the Foley's was removed. On April 3, the Foley's was replaced. Then we should not be discontinuing the days. We should be counting as 
day three, four, five, six, and April four will be seven. All right, because there was no one full calendar day without the catheter. In this example, as we see that the foliage was removed on April two, and there was no foliage on April three. So April four will be the day one of the foliage. We should be counting the days from the very start. Now, previous definitions which we have discussed regarding uh, the dilates, uh, the date of event, infection windows period, uh, present on admission, HKI's classification, RIT, these are the same, more or less same for all of the device associated infection, but these things are specific for the county. What is that? That the urine culture must reveal 10 raised to power 5 colony forming unit per ml only. If we have a urine culture that reveal one organisms or two organisms with the frequency or uh, the uh, the numbers which are less than 10 raised to power 5 of CFU, these are excluded, they will not be included. Bacteria is the only acceptable causative organism for the county. We should be excluding the urine culture which are positive for yield, mold, the morphic fungi or the parasites. So only the bacteria, if the urine culture reveals or isolated bacteria, which are more than 10 raised to power 5 of colony forming unit per ml, then this is the culture which is need to be included for the county surveillance. Same pathogen list for the SUTIs and ABUTIs. If we will study now what is SUTI and ABUTI, there is no difference of the pathogens, all the pathogens remain the same. No need to look for the urine analysis, urine chemistry or urine analysis. It is not one of the diagnostic criteria for the county. Core temperatures are no longer needed. Any of the temperature, any body temperature, like for example, now uh, uh, absolute, we are not measuring the axilla, oral temperature or, uh, you know, rectal temperature or uh, whatever temperature we are uh, monitoring, it is applicable inside the definition of the county surveillance. These are the organisms, again, which are not acceptable. Commensal urinary flora, mixed flora, these are not acceptable. Organisms cannot be used. are the one if they reach to 10 raised to power 5 of colony forming unit in numbers then these are the inclusive samples or uh, the culture which we need to include inside the county surveillance. What is the county criteria? There are two types broadly there are two types this is the symptomatic urinary tract infection and asymptomatic bacteremic urinary tract infection. All right. This, there are SUTI 1, SUTI 2, and ABUTI, asymptomatic bacteremic urinary tract infections. All right. Uh, SUTI 1 is further classified, can be further classified into SUTI 1A and 1B, depends upon presence or absence of the foliage catheter, all right? So again, SUTI1, SUTI2, and ABUTI, these are the three modules which are included in the surveillance. Good. What is SUTI1? Very easy, very easy to, you know, uh, to remember that for the SUTI1 and SUTI2, we must have the patient, first of all, we must have a patient with the indwelling urinary catheter for more than two days. Secondly, we must be having the signs and symptoms present. And thirdly, we must have a urinary culture positive. All right. So these three, first of all, patient with the indwelling catheter. Second, sign and symptoms. And third is the urinary culture. All right. So let us go through SUTI-1. What is it? Patient had, number one, it must meet all of these three criteria. Number one, 
we have a patient with an indwelling catheter that is left in place for more than two calendar days on the date of event. So when it is a date of event, there was a catheter for two, uh, sorry, there is a catheter in place for more than two calendar days. Catheter, it is present for any portion of the calendar day on a date of event or removed one day before. All right. Uh, as we previously discussed that uh, regarding continuation and discontinuation of the calendar of the urinary catheter, same applies to this, that if the urinary catheter is in place on the date of event or it is it was removed on the date of event or one day before, still the patient fulfills the criteria. Number second part or criteria, it is the sign and symptoms. Fever, it is required to be more than 38. Uh, patient complaint of a suprapubic tenderness or pain, costo-vertebral angle pain or tenderness, urinary urgency, urinary frequency, and dysuria. These are the three symptoms which are present when, for sure, as you guys very well know, these are present when the catheter is being removed. And we know that if the catheter is removed on a date of a event or one day before, it still fulfills the criteria. Number third criteria is the patient has a urinary culture with no more than two species, not more than two species of bacteria which are present for more than 10 raised to power 5 colony forming unit per ml in numbers. All right, good. So, SUTI 1 must have the three criteria. First of all, there is a patient with indwelling catheter or the catheter was removed today or the day before. Good. Secondly, we have the signs symptoms like fever, suprapubic pain, or costovertebral angle tenderness. These are the patients with the catheter and without catheter, the patient complains of urgency, frequency, or dysuria. And number three is the positive urine culture with not more than two species, which are more than 10 raised to power five CFUs. This is SUTI one. SUTI one. What are the uh, what are the symptoms in the presence of the catheter when the catheter is still inside the patient? That is the fever, more than thirty eight, suprapubic pain or tenderness, costo vertebral angle pain or tenderness. The patient without the catheter, the catheter was removed on the date of event or the day before, can have a urinary urgency, frequency or dysuria. All right. What is SUTI 2? Only difference between the broadly, broadly, what is the difference between SUTI 1 and SUTI 2? These are the ages. In SUTI 1, the patients are more than one years old, and in SUTI 2, the patients are less than in one year old. Less than one year old with having some different uh, symptoms. All right. Now, first is the first criteria, the patient is one year old, less than one year old and has a catheter in place for more than two calendar days. Same is the rule. Uh, the catheter is present for more than two calendar days on the date of event or it was removed on the date of event or the day before. Second is the symptoms, fever, it is more than 38 or hypothermia less than 36. Apnea, bradycardia, lethargy, vomiting, and suprapubic tenderness. If suprapubic tenderness, it is uh, only when uh, the device, uh, the catheter was not there. Patient has a culture with no more than two species. Same is the criteria for the infection that there, there should be not more than two species of the organisms uh, of the bacteria identified with each more than 10 raised to power five of the colony forming unit. This is the flow chart, all right? Uh, it gives you a fairly nice idea that when you classify the patient as the SUTI one or two, first thing, the culture, it should be having more than, not more than two species. And all of these identified two of, uh, or one of uh, the bacteria, uh, they must have 10 raised to power five of the CFUs in number. If yes, we have to look for whether the catheter was in a place on the date of event or removed on a date of event or a day before. 
and he must have the sign and symptoms. All right, the sign and symptoms we, we already discussed. If all these three met, we can classify the patient SUTI1 if the age is more than one years old and SUTI2 if the patient is having uh, the age is less than one years old. What is ABUTI? The patient must meet one, two, and three criteria. The first criteria, the patient with or without a urinary catheter has no sign and symptoms of SUTI 1 or 2 according to the age. As we know that, uh, you know, uh, for the adults, for the patients which are more than one year old, uh, uh, you know, there is no hypothermia, there is no apnea, there is no bradycardia, and the rest the symptoms are same. Um, but the patient is uh, asymptomatic bacteria with or without intervalling catheter has no sign and symptoms, okay? Second one, the urine culture with no more than two species and at least one of the bacterium, it should be more than 10 raised to power 5 of the CFU. Number third is the patient has an organism identified from the blood specimen with at least one matching organism to the bacterium identified in the urinary specimen. All right, or it meets the LCBI criteria too without fever and it uh, was explained in the first lecture today morning, what is LCBI one, all right? So when you will categorize the infection as ABUTI, when the patient has a catheter on a date of event or it was being removed uh, on a date of event or day before, any age, number second, there was a urine culture positive with no more than two species and at least one of them, it is more than 10 raised to power five. And number third is the blood culture positive with at least one matching organism with one matching bacterium, which was isolated from the urine. If these three categories are meeting and the patient is without any symptom, it is termed as ABUTI, asymptomatic bacteriamic urinary tract infection. I think so, the things are very clear up till now. We have SUTI1, SUTI2, and ABUTI. SUTI1 for the patients more than uh, one year's age, has the symptom, has the urinary catheter in place, and has the urine culture positive. SUTI2, patient less than one years of age with specific sign and symptoms, has the catheter and the urinary culture positive. ABUTI patient has the catheter but without sign and symptoms, urinary culture positive and the blood culture is positive with one of the matching organism for uh, which was isolated from the urine culture. Again, this is the, uh, you know, the flow chart which is uh, available, uh, you know, in the CDC module of the county as well as in this lecture, if you want to go through it will make the life very much easy how to classify the SUTIs or uh, 1, 2 or ABUTI. Now, let us discuss something, uh, you know, in brief about the symptoms of the CAUTI. Suprapubic tenderness, whether elicited by palpation or provided as a subjective complaint by the patient, it should be documented, all right, and documented very clearly in the medical record, it is acceptable as a SUTI criteria, yani there should be a very clear documentation which proves that patient complained the suprapubic tenderness or there was a signs of, you know, uh, of pain when we are palpating the tenderness and it is very much clearly documented. We can consider it as a symptom. Pain or tenderness of a suprapubic region or costo vertebral angles should be without other recognized cause. This is very much clear that the patient should not be having any obvious reason of suprapubic pain or the costovertebral angle pain. We should be putting this, uh, you know, inside our CROWT criteria if there is no other clear indication. Apnea, bradycardia, lethargy, vomiting, and suprapubic tenderness should be without any recognized cause in the patients which are less than one year's age. As we know, apnea, bradycardia, these are classified to the patients which are less than one years old. Lethargy, vomiting, and suprapubic tenderness should be all of the symptoms. They should be clearly documented, first of all. Secondly, all the other causes which may cause these symptoms are 
to be excluded before labeling them as one of the criteria of the county. Generalized blow back pain should not be interpreted as the costovertebral angle pain. Generalized abdominal pain should not be considered as the pain uh, as the suprapubic tenderness. Frequency, urgency, and dysuria can be used when the for sure they can be used when the catheter is not in place, even if it is removed on the same day or the day or the day even the catheter was removed on the same day or the day before. Fever and hypothermia is a non-specific symptom of infection. We know that this is a non-specific infection of a symptoms, but we cannot exclude it from the definition of UTI because they are clinically deemed due to another recognized cause. What does it mean? That uh, we have a patient with a catheter, we have a patient with a fever, though we know that fever is a non-specific cause of a infection, non-specific symptom of an infection, but we cannot overlook the presence of fever in a patient with a catheter having no other cause. It is possible that an individual may have a fever due to more than one infection present at the same time, all right? So we cannot, uh, as we discussed about the pain and tenderness that we have to exclude, uh, you know, the obvious reason for uh, causing these pain and tenderness, but for the fever, there can be more than one reason of having a fever. For example, if the patient is having uh, pneumonia, if the patient is having, God forbid, a central line or burst stream infection, he can be having a fever. So, but we cannot exclude fever. We cannot say that this fever is because of X, Y, Z reason. We have to include fever inside our criteria of defining the county when the patient is having a catheter in place for more than two calendar days. Uh, secondary BASI caused by the county, we have discussed before that a positive urinary specimen, the organisms obtained by a culture method only, we should not be relying on the organisms which are isolated by a non-cultured methodology. Non-cultured methodology, I was saying one question in the, in the morning, in the presentation, the non-culture based methodology to isolate the organism, it is by the PCR or by another molecular testing like antigen testing and so forth. So uh, any of the urine culture, any of uh, the organisms which are uh, isolated apart from the culture will not be included. Only the organisms identified by the culture methods and for sure they should be present during the infection time frame. Infection window period, that is seven days. Matching positive blood specimen organisms identify by a culture or a non-culture based microbiological testing. And there should be a matching organism and it should be within 14 to 17 days of bloodstream infection attribution period. We have discussed secondary bloodstream infection attribution period uh, before. I think so you guys are very, very clear in it. Now, just uh, to see whether you guys are sleeping or all awake and very much uh, with me, we just have to see whether you got something or not. Now, unfortunately, I'm not able to listen to you guys, but you can test yourself. You can ask yourself a question that can a urinary tract infection be a secondary infection? Can a urinary tract infection be a secondary infection to the bloodstream infection or VAE or CLEPSI or whatever? MashaAllah, no, no, no. So the things that, Alhamdulillah, you are getting something. All right, good. So UTIs as a secondary infection, this is a misconception. UTI, it is always a primary site of infection and cannot be considered as a secondary to another site of infection. UTI cannot be a secondary infection. When a patient meets CAUTI criteria and the same organism is identified in a burn wound culture, these are considered as two infection. These are not secondary to one another. When a patient create, meets, for example, a NEMO event, all right, or VAE event, and the CAUTI cannot be classified as a secondary to VAE event, even if 
the same organisms are being in fight. What does it mean that UTI, it is a primary infection always, it cannot be secondary to any other infection. Good. Now, look at this table and uh, could you please answer me or answer yourself that the patient was admitted on 30th of December, on the 31st of December, on 30, he does not have any sign and symptoms. On, for, on uh, I'm sorry, the patient was admitted on 1st of January with no urinary tract sign and symptoms and Foley's was inserted. Two days before, there was no sign and symptoms when he was at home or wherever. On 2nd of January, after one calendar day of admission, the urine culture come positive with E. coli and the E. coli which are isolated, it is more than 10 raised to power 5 of CFU. So what do you think? Is it the county? HA, it is the county HA or what? So, this is the positive urine culture. First of all, first of all, we cannot, we cannot label it as uh, the county. For which reason that, first of all, the patient does not have a sign and symptoms. Secondly, the patient does not have a blood culture positive to be labeled as ABUTI. And thirdly, the patient is having just a positive urine culture without sign and symptoms and without blood culture positive with the same organism that is E. coli. This is not meeting a criteria of any kind of, uh, you know, uh, county. It is not even HA because it was, uh, the culture is positive on the second day of admission. Now, if we go down and see 1-9, that is 9th of January, the patient has a positive urine culture of E. coli, 10 raised to power 5 of CFUs, and the fever on 10th of January. So what is your opinion now? That is it county or not? Yes, it is a county. Very right. This is county. For what given reason? Number one, the patient has a urine culture positive. And number one, the patient has a Foley's catheter in place. Number two, the patient has a urinary culture positive. Number three, the fever sign and symptom is there. All of these criteria are present during the infection window period. What is the infection window period? Seven days period time with date of event that is the positive urinary culture in the middle that is 9th of January, three days before that is 6, 7 and 8 and three days after 10, 11 and 12. All of the things, all of the criteria are meeting. So, this is the county and SUTI, uh, it is one or two, we cannot know because we do not know the age of a patient. Good. This is further the explanation which we have discussed now. Uh, just for the sake of lab concentrations, uh, the majority of a urine culture, as we all know that but the result is coming more than one pathogen. More than two species are considered as the mixed flora. So the sample will not be taken into the consideration of the county surveillance. Acceptable positive urine culture for SUTIs, I am sorry for the mistake here, STUIs, not SUTIs, should have no more than two species of microorganism present. More than two species in the same culture cannot meet as SUTI criteria because they will be labeled as mixed flora. For example, the culture with the Pseudomonas aeruginosa and Providentia sucheri, these are the two species. Good. Culture with E. coli and Pterococcus proteus, these are the three species. Number first one, Pseudomonas aeruginosa and Providentia sucheria can be included inside our can be inside the concentration of classifying uh, you know SUTIs if 
the number it is more than 10 raised to power 5 of CFUs. Methicillin sensitive and methicillin resistant staph aureus. Staph aureus will be the one species. We cannot be labeling them as a two species. By collecting specimen, we have to make sure that urinary culture must be obtained using an aseptic technique, appropriate technique, clean catch, collection, or catheterization. Specimen from indwelling catheters should be aspirated after doing optimal disinfection of the sampling ports. In infants, urine culture should be obtained by bladder catheterization or suprapubic aspiration. Positive urine culture from the bag are not reliable because of variety of reason we know and should be confirmed by a specimen which is collected aseptically through suprapubic aspiration or by the catheter spot. Urinary catheter tips for sure absolute they should not be cultured and they are not accepted for the diagnosis of the UTIs. And same goes for uh, culturing tips for the, you know, for the majority of the device associated infections. Urinary specimen for the culture should be processed as soon as possible, preferably be within one to two hours. If we are not sure that we cannot reprocess the sample within one to two hours, then we should be refrigerating the sample or inoculation should be done in a primary isolation media before travel. For example, if one of the hospital does not have any facility for uh, doing uh, the culture, they should be uh, inoculating on the medium, you know, inoculation of, uh, you know, of a sample on a particular medium before transportation or uh, you know, they should be refrigerating it at uh, optimal temperature. Refrigerated samples should be cultured within 24 hours. Uh, collection of the denominators. What are the denominators? What is the denominator for the county surveillance? These are the patients with the catheters. All right. The denominators are the patient with the catheters. It should be uh, either electronically, because we are doing the electronic surveillance now, we should be calculating it on a daily basis. Patient days and urinary catheters should be collected at the same time every day for what given reason that if we are not able to do so, then we might result in more device days than the patient days. And it is uh, not possible. That for example, we have 10 patient days and 20 catheter days. The patient days are, uh, you know, they should be more or if not more equal to the device days. So it should be collected on the very same day at the same time. And lastly, if we, uh, because now the system will inshallah be calculating everything for us uh, electronically, but we should be aware that if we want to calculate the county rate or any device associated infection rate, the event should be the numerator, the device days should be the denominator, and it should be multiplied with the constant of 1000 and that is 1000 patient days. The result will be 1000 patient days. The ratio, device utilization ratio, all right, the device utilization ratio, it is having a numerator of the catheter days on the top and the patient days in the denominator, all right. The utilization ratio can never be more than one, all right can never be more than one. If you have a utilization ratio of more than one, it means 100% there is some kind of a blunder you have done or you are doing uh, wrong calculations. Utilization ratios are always less than one. You can, well, you know, for sure stratify the list, uh, the rates and the ratio by the location inside your hospital in whatever way you want for the rates, for example, for the ICU, for the surgical, medical surgical ICU, for the step down, for the surgical ICU, medical ICUs, whatever, whatever you want to do. That is all for today's lecture.
If you have any question, any queries, any misunderstanding, you are very most welcome to ask.